Hi, welcome. So how's everybody doing today? I am super excited. It's second week in September and we are going to be talking about one of my favorite things, which is marketing your travel business. Let me know in comments. Uh, make sure that I am coming in clearly. You can hear me okay and there is no problem with the sound because I as always am trying different stuff. <laughs> So hold on, let me, yes, perfect. I'm where, can you hear me okay out there on the internet streets? Hopefully everyone can hear okay. Lovely, love to hear that. All right, so let's get started. So how many of you guys love to create sales pages? Is that the thing that you like to do? Do you like to create your trip sales pages? So before I jump into the sales page of a thing, how many of you guys have sales or group trips or signature trips or itineraries that you sell and you sell them through a site? You sell them through a trip page or a um, on your website. How many of you guys are doing that? And if so, where are you going on your trip or what's the itinerary destination that you are sending your people or you'd like people to buy into? Let me know. Um, sales pages are hard. Yes, they are. I will tell you a story. Um, I always love to start with a story. So when I first started in marketing, um, let me rephrase that. When I first started in the um, online space, because I had a business, uh, a physical brick and mortar business, um, and that's how I started as an entrepreneur, you know, we didn't really have to do sales pages when I had our um, barbershop. We just did a website and we put our services on there and it was sort of a lackluster bar, um, you know, website because, you know, back in the early 2000s, 20 years ago, um, you know, you just needed a website and then it came in Facebook and then you needed to have a business page and then it came in, you needed to show up on your business page and make your offers there. And so I really never had to do sales pages, so to speak. I just had to do, like, I just had to, like, create flyers, right? Or do you guys feel like that? Like, when you build a trip, the first thing that you want to do is you want to build a flyer, right? Which is an information page about your trip. And you want to hand out your flyers. And you want people to buy from that, right? How many of you guys feel like that? Because that was certainly what I wanted to do. That was what I knew when I started marketing um, my barbershop. And then when I got into the online space in mid, I guess it was like 2015 is when I entered said, so it's been about 10 years, it's been nine years since I've been on the online space. My first online um, endeavor was selling hair. So I had had quit the barber shop. My husband still had it. And I was like, you know what? Someone's got to be a parent. And I went to go become a football mob. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to transfer all of this knowledge that I have and I'm going to sell hair. So I started selling online. I sell it, started selling extension hair online. And that is when I start, I learned about a sales page. I was like, what the heck is a sales page? And why can't I just like do, did what we did guerrilla marketing our barbershop. And many of you all are probably guerrilla marketing your travel business. And so what guerrilla marketing is, is that you're going out there and you're trying to meet as many people as you possibly can and that you're handing out business cards or you're giving them your flyers or you're posting your flyers and don't get me wrong guerrilla marketing is still a very effective way to market your business however i will say that um it's very laborious right you got to shake hands and kiss a lot of babies in order to reach enough people for you to actually be seen now don't get me wrong either. I think that you can kiss a lot of hands, kiss a lot of babies, shake a lot of hands, and make a, quite a bit of great money through referral business and that route. However, what I quickly learned is in the hair business, in the in the beauty business, right? Particularly hair extension business, shaking hands and kissing babies wasn't the fastest route for me to make sales. So I had to learn digital marketing because I wanted to, like I had found some people who sold hair and they were like killing the game. This is before like, you know, even Facebook was, was Facebooking like it is now, right? And I didn't even know how to advertise online. 
I wanted to make a, a space for myself online, but there's no such thing as making a space for yourself without sales pages. And so I had to quickly, and it wasn't a quick, <laughs> it wasn't a quick lesson, but I had to learn how to compel people to buy my stuff on paper, so to speak, on the internet, right? Come in sales pages. And so if you all want to sell, that was a long-winded way to tell you that if you want to sell your trips to strangers or people who are not so very close to you and what you have to offer, and they don't know that yet you're the bomb.com, you've got to be really persuasive in your sales pages to compel them to buy. Because you may even have a trip page and somebody type that they are creating their trip pages and sales pages on Travel Joy. Some of you guys maybe are using We Travel. Some of you all maybe building sales pages on your website, whatever website builder that you're using. And that's okay. The the tool in this situation is not as critical as the words that are on the page. Right. If you want to be able to move people to purchase merely by a sales page or a, you know, something that you show them online, you've got to get really good at talking on paper. And so that is what our topic is today is how to create a sales page that compels somebody to buy based on the way that you structure the page. And so how many of you guys have actually thought about what needs to go on the page of your trip pages, right? What kinds of stuff do you put on your pages? Let me tell you the kind of stuff that I used to put on my page. I put the itinerary and make sure it was nicely bulleted out. I'd maybe have a couple of pictures on the page. Of course, I couldn't forget the pricing. And then, you know, I couldn't forget the terms and conditions. And then I couldn't forget the cancellation policy and the payment policy and all of these really legal mumbo jumbo to cut CYA, right? I needed to cover my backside, so to speak, so that I would make sure that this said person who was going to buy my trip knew all that they needed to do so they wouldn't cheat me out of the money that was due to me. And they would know that if they don't make a payment that the trip's going to get canceled. Like, so I was really more concerned with my sales page, dotting the I and crossing the T's than compelling them to buy. How many of you guys build sales pages like that, that you want to make sure that you throw up all of the logistical information that is associated with the trip so that you cross your T's and dot your I's? How many of you guys are doing that? Because that's what I did. And, I, and, and literally, that is still how I start the page, is making sure that all of the information that is critical to the trip is accounted for and is on the page. But people don't buy because all the legal mumbo jumbo, you, you realize that, right? They don't buy because you've dotted your I's and you crossed your T's. You've got to compel them to buy for more than just the legal reasons, right? All right, so you've got the info about the destination, resort, the inclusions, the exclusions, the itinerary and the pricing, the final due date, the deposit, right? We're concerned about the logistics because, you know, ladies and ladies and gents, right? We are the admins of their trip, right? We've got to make sure that we're literally their virtual assistant on the trip. We've got to make sure that they are covered and that we are covered legally to ensure that they're going to have a great trip. And frankly, that's important. So I'm not going to say that it's not important, but it doesn't sell trips. Like all that stuff doesn't sell trips. What sells trips are the things that we're about to talk about now. Right. So someone wrote that. I think it's uh, well, happy birthday too. just want to tell you, Danielle, happy birthday. Attractive pics, highlights, summary of itineraries, toll booking page is has all the legal stuff. That's right. So we want to make sure our pages have the legal stuff. But I'm going to tell you, that's not killer sales copy. That's not why people buy the trip. And oftentimes I actually go on, I haven't done it in a while, but one of the things that I, I used to teach when I was teaching at Travel Joy, building sales pages with Travel Joy is how do you ethically, you know, sneak and look at someone else's sales page um, and see what they have. And so I've seen y'all sales pages and unfortunately they're not persuasive. They don't really sell 
based on, like, it doesn't jump out at me. And this is not a slight on you. I am not trying to judge y'all. I'm just trying to tell you the reality of what I see and what I've built myself in the past is building a sales page that's got nothing but a bunch of text jargon on it that really doesn't connect to the person is it the way to persuade them to buy, right? It certainly makes them think that maybe you have all of the stuff covered, but you know, if they don't even get to the point where they even give a, you know what, right? Then they're not gonna buy. We want to create sales pages and trip pages that sell. And so in today's lesson, we're gonna talk about what are the keys to a successful sales page. And of course, how we can use AI to help us be more successful in doing that. All right. So I'm going to give you, I believe I have 11, 11, 11 key factors that I want you. So if you do not have a pen and paper, you're going to want to grab a piece of paper and get your pen because we're going to talk through each of these items. And we've got about 20 minutes to do that. And we're going to talk about how AI can help you You guys ready to do that. Let me know in comments, give me some hearts and some love if you are ready to do that. The first and most important thing that is important when it comes to building a sales page is your headline. It is going to be the first thing that your prospective buyer sees when they do a trip. If you have trips that don't have a theme, don't have a reason, a compelling reason for somebody to do, this is where you should spend your time. Why it's so important that you have a clear and compelling headline is, is that it grabs the attention. We want you to grab the attention of your ideal client, right? So we've been talking over the last several weeks about the concept of the fact that you need to be creating a group and signature trips and selling on purpose, right? You need to not just pick out some trip out of your, you know, out of thin air and not have an ideal client in mind. So that headline needs to grab the attention of the person that you want to get out of town, right? So when you tell me that you want to go out of town and you want to go to fill in the blank, right? So let's say, cause I'm going to talk about Bali cause I'm still on a Bali high, right? Is if you want to take someone to Bali, who is it that you want to take and why do they want to go to Bali, right? Your headline needs to speak to them and your sub headline needs to also speak to them. So both of these really need to be compelling. And so let's talk about why your headlines are failing is because they're vague, right? They are generic headlines. They're like, you know, buy Bali, right? Come go to Bali. You don't want to miss Bali. That's not compelling. And if I wanted to attract professional women who are workaholics that need to have a trip so they can unwind, my headline needs to call them out. It needs to have them say, oh, that's me. Like I need to be in Bali, right? I, I'm that woman. I am that overworked woman that needs to be at said destination that you're going to. If you are creating group trips that are trying to appeal to everyone, you're doing yourself a disservice and it's not likely you're selling them out, right? So why they fail is because they're too vague. They don't connect and they don't address what makes the trip exciting to the person that you want to get out of town. So chat GPT and AI can help you with that by helping you with headlines, headlines and sub headlines. What it can do is help you brainstorm the headlines that provide the connection to your Bali trip or your destination trip and your ideal client. So we want, we want that connection. We want that emotional connection. We want the hand to go up when they see that cop, that, that headline and be like, Oh, Bali helps me unwind, helps professional women unwind, right? Or whoever your ideal client is, right? So help, help me help you all. I always love when this is interactive, type in comments. And if you catch this in the replay, uh, what, type out who's your ideal client and where do you want to go? Because what we can do is create a prompt that is going to connect the two so that you have a compelling headline and a sub headline that's going to stop the scroll. Number two, key success factor that you want to do in creating killer copy sales copy is you want to have a strong value proposition. 
course, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I created a prompt and I was working on that prompt um, in preparation for our funnel mastering class that's happening this weekend. And the prompt that I, when I was testing it out, I was like, well, what's a value proposition? How can travel advisors create a value proposition? Well, really all that means is, is why they should choose the trip over any other trip? Why should they choose your trip over Expedia.com's trip? Or when William Shatner comes on and says, go to Bali, why I shouldn't go with William and go with you, right? It's really the value that you bring to the design of the trip, the reason why the trip is uh, created and why you uniquely help your ideal client, right? So it's not just the fact of, oh, I've got this trip that's going to fill in the blank place, right? It's really how you bridge the connection on them, you, and the destination. Right. So the value proposition. So we're actually working on our um, Asia 2026. And so I put in my I put in my um, uh, my value proposition and right. My ideal client for this trip is travel advisors. Right. Who are looking to learn about Asia and go on a learn through experience. So when I was typing out my strong value proposition, it was really focused on what a travel advisor is going to get different than if they go on a fam trip right? Because what we do is different than fam trips, right? What is it that you do for your trips that's going to be different than (laughs) what they can do for themselves? Or if they go with another advisor or somebody else who is selling this, these destinations, right? So value proposition is really important. How ChatGPT or a conversational AI tool can help you is, is it can help you write that value proposition. It can help you explain the benefits of the value of your trip to your ideal client. If you're having a hard time connecting that and making that value proposition, right? I'm looking out there um, and, you know, thank you. I know Danielle's um, handle on YouTube. I don't know everybody else's handle on YouTube. So I know that Danielle uses rich aunties, right? Like her ideal client is rich aunties. And so when trying to identify the value that her trips bring, it's really, you know, single women or maybe, you know, with couple who want to, you know, I don't know what the marital status or the couple statuses of her people, but her ideal client is rich aunties, right? So it's people who aren't dealing with uh, kids directly, but they're the auntie to their, the kids in their life. And they've got the disposable income to go on these kinds of experiences. So right. The value proposition that she would really be talking about is how her trips will allow them to do that. Number three is emotional connection, right? Legal mumbo jumbo and making sure that the I's and the T's are not emotional. They don't have a connection to your ideal client and the trip that you've designed. And so most of the the sales copy that I see, and sales copy is just another word for the language on a trip, right? So the words that are on the page, what I see that's missing is is the emotion, right? The the you know I, I I see the words exciting and amazing and you know one of a kind and bucket list, right? But again, there's still not an emotional connection to what I'm reading, right? And what I've written in the past and the audience who's reading it, right? I want them to feel themselves there on the trip or that they can imagine themselves dropping what they're doing to take the time on a trip that I've planned and see themselves there. And so why it's important to have number three, an emotional connection is because people book because they want to, right? Travel is not a necessity. Although if you ask me, I think it is a necessity. And you as a travel advisor, you know, it's a necessity. We in the travel business know it's a necessity, but most people who book travel, they book it because they desire it. Why do they desire? What is it that they want to achieve? Is it on their bucket list? But why is it on their bucket list? What is important about this particular destination that they want to 
experience, right? Is it because it's something that they've always dreamed of when they were a kid? Is it something that they want to aspire to because they want to keep up with the Joneses? They saw Kim Kardashian go there. What is their reason why that they may want to go? And really, there's only a couple of reasons why people want to do a thing, right? They want it because they saw it when they were younger and they're looking at their past and they're like, now, by golly, today, I'm going to do it, right? The Scarlet O'Hara, right? So, but G. Willikers by, you know, you know, by hook or by crook, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it now because I've always wanted it. Right. So they, they're looking to their past and they want something they want it. Uh, they want to acquire it because it's something that they've always dreamed of. Right. Or they're looking to their future and they've got the means to do it. And they're looking and they're saying, you know what, I've got the means now and I, I've never done it. I'm going to do it. Right. That's another reason why. And so you've got to make that emotional connection. And that's a hard thing to do if you're not a writer. Like if you're not a, a writer and this is your, your full-time job writing and creating those connections, right? We create content, unfortunately, as travel advisors that don't connect emotionally, right? It's very dry. Um, it's just factual. It's non-emotional. There's no connection at all. It doesn't move the, the, um, the buyer with excitement, oftentimes what does move you all um, are the videos that you create. So if you don't know how to do it in words, then you should be having comp compelling video of the destination that you've gone to that shows the action, that shows the people experiencing the food, the culture, the activities, the events, right? So they can see themselves there, right? People are visual and they're emotional. And so our sales pages need to connect with them that way. Now, let's say you've gone, you've not, you've not gone to the location and you don't have video. Maybe, maybe, you know, I, I reached out to when I was in Dubai last year, um, I went and I visited the Marriott and we created video, but you know, I'm not a videographer. Um, and so some of my video was kind of bad. So I was like, you know what, I really want some better pictures, some video of the hotel. So I call, I talked to the the sales manager who did the tour for us. And I was like, can you send me some video? And he sent me some amazing video, right? So now I've got this video content that I can cut and splice, add my voice on top of it, and then create the sort of emotional connection with the room and the property and all of that. So what I'm saying is, is that just because you don't have it doesn't mean you can't get it. ChatGPT can help you with creating that emotional storytelling even with video that you have, right? So you could take, and so one of the things I showed you all yesterday was a tool by the name of Opus, right? So if I had video between Opus and ChatGPT, I wanted to create a narrative. Maybe I wanted to create, I want to create an audio script for me to record going over this Marriott properties, um, the rooms and the activities and what I thought of it, right? I could record that video, that audio of myself. I could have ChatGPT help me create that audio script. I could record it and then I could use a tool like Cast Magic or Opus to actually overlay it. I actually use another tool to actually overlay. I use Canva to overlay my audio on top of that and create the sort of emotional video content that I can use on my sales page. That's all using AI tools to do that. So what I would say, if the one thing that you can take out of what we've said thus far, I, I've given you three things that you should take out of, but specifically is this emotional connection that your sales pages need to have with your ideal client, why they want to see themselves at that destination. Your sales copy and imagery needs to do that. Number four, social proof is, listen, you don't have any testimonials. You don't have any reasons why you're the bomb.com and other people saying that. So it's one thing for you to say that you're the bomb.com, but are other people saying that you're the bomb.com? Even if you have testimonials in words, audio, video, screenshots, it doesn't matter. You need to be taking that testimonial, even if it's not a testimonial of the destination that you're selling, you want to show the testimonials on your sales pages. And so what I do is I, you know, before I started doing video or requesting video testimonials, I always did a survey, send out a survey after the trip. How many of you guys are sending out surveys after your trips? Send out survey, how do we do, what did you like, blah, 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 right? And all this information. 
have how we can take that that content from a survey and turn it into a story and or a testimonial that you can use on your sales page comes in chat GPT. I actually will take all of my responses for my questions and answers on my actual surveys, feed that into chat GPT to create a testimonial that's worthy of posting. Cause oftentimes people will answer and it, you know, maybe the sentences are all together, like strung together. Maybe it's missing context. Maybe it doesn't mention the name of the, des the, the trip. Does it include the destination? Does it include some things that I need to add? So I will have ChatGPT help me create a testimonial that takes the spirit of what the client said and create it into testimonial language. ChatGPT is really good at that, like being able to translate that into a testimonial that you can use, right? So they're giving you a full five star, they're giving you language, you can translate that into full sentences that make sense, that also then take into the context of the trip. Listen, what I will tell you too is your testimonials don't have to be destination specific for you to use them on your sales page. Literally, you can create if you've got, let's say, reviews on your Google page, on your Facebook page, you've got your surveys and the answers to that, what you want to do is create yourself maybe five to 10 testimonials that you can use on your sales pages and put them on every sales page that you do. Does it matter that it's not destination specific? What we're looking for is somebody else to have said that they received impeccable service. They had a great time on their trip and that you're the bomb.com. That social proof in and of itself helps. One of the things that we are now doing on all of our sales pages is that we're pulling in our testimonials from our Google, my business page. So we have a widget that we can do that and place it on every sales page. We have the same testimonials across all sales pages. Now, as you start to build destination specific testimonials and images from trips that people have gone on, then you can start to replace those across the board testimonials with specific testimonials that are associated with a particular destination. But in the meantime, all testimonials, same testimonials on every sales page. Number five, imagery. Listen, we are an image based business. Like, you know, I've been in the hair business. So I've always been in some sort of business that requires pictures, <laughs> pictures, videos, and um, things that represent the visual and speak to the this the eye sensory right so sight sensory so stunning um, images of the destination activities the accommodations and inspiring that help inspire the travelers to see themselves there now if you've got a bunch of pictures and they're pictures of you that's okay but frankly, nobody cares about you. And I hate to say that that way, but they don't. Nobody cares about you and how much fun that you are having on the trip. What you've got to do when you're taking pictures of destinations, when you're on site, is you've got to create a story that allows the person to see themselves there right? So pictures of the dish, that's great, but why is the dish good, right? I would couple the picture of the dish with commentary of what it tasted like, right? How amazing the service was, what was included that's not in the picture, right? So it's not just the imagery. Um, years ago, I had a, a boss I worked for uh, tell me this, that a picture is worth a thousand words only if a thousand words is accompanying the picture. And it stuck with me because that is such a true statement, right? Just the picture alone without the overlay, the voice overlay, the words overlay that describe why somebody would enjoy this, right? So for my rich auntie who wants to do culinary and you show a picture of Morocco with this amazing dish at a cooking class, right? Why the smells were so important, right? The fact that you were able to create create this aroma, uh, you know, aromatherapy along with the taste therapy. I would explain that in an audio clip on top of the imagery that I did there. So it's not just the imagery, it's also the words and the sounds that you add to the imagery that make it so much more powerful. So number five is imagery, but not the imagery alone. It's the words that go with it. Number six is a clear call to action. 
right? And so when it comes to, oh, let me tell you how ChatGPT can help you with number five is it can help you with recommendations for images. So let's say you haven't been on the destination and you're going to do a discovery trip. I love doing discovery trips as your first way to get to a location, take some friendlies with you, helps you get the 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 pictures on site on ground location inspections and all of that but it you can ask ChatGPT to help you with the imagery right uh, the best images that complement the copy that you are creating it can help you with that that are likely to um, connect and if you're a mid journey um, person which I I, I will that will, will gladly tell you that I am not. Um, I'm actually um, in a group who is like, a, she's a mid journey like beast. Um, and she creates these realistic imagery. And I think as an African American woman, that is something that has always been lacking in this industry and really across the internet streets is representation of people of color. Um, it was very difficult for us to find pictures in the beauty industry and the, in the travel industry as well. Uh, enter in ChatGPT, actually creating people, realistic images of people on site in the destination. The AI can help you do that, hands down. It's really going to be on your prompting. Number six is a clear call to action. I can't tell you how many sales pages um, that I see that the, the, the button to buy is way on the bottom, right? <laughs> like the button to buy is way like, you know, 17 scrolls down, <laughs> right? Like you got to scroll and 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 scroll some more before I get the opportunity to buy. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta really understand the psychology of buying. You've got like, I think there's like three or four different buyer types. The first one is somebody who like is already familiar. They get to, you send them to their sales page. You need to give them a button to buy like right in the, the top part. It's called above the line. You want to give them the, the buy now button now they're not going to wait you you dropped it and they're going to buy don't make them scroll to the end to see right have all your legal mumbo jumbo everything in the terms and conditions that they have to sign off when they buy right so don't think that your call to action button the only place it needs to be is at the bottom of the screen you need to have it all throughout the screen and so having that clear buy now or if you just want to learn more or join the wait list or whatever Having that multiple times in multiple locations throughout the sales page is clear because you've got the instant buyer who's like, they love you. They're ready to buy. Don't make it hard for them to buy. Don't ever make it hard for somebody to do the action that you want them to do. Number two, you've got the person who's like, I got to see, like, you got to, you got to wow me, right? That's where you're going to, you're going to give them some stuff, right? Right. There's a whole like structure to a sales page that you've got to have. You got to give them some reasons why they need to buy. You've got to connect with them emotionally, right? So you want to hit them right in the middle of the page, right? That person's going to bypass the first, but, but maybe they get you on the video that you do that shows like the culinary experience that they're going to get or the, the, all the activities because they're adventure travelers and they want to go, you know, ATV riding on said location because that's what they're all about. And you show how they can not only get mud all over them, they get mud all over their friends and family. And that's the thing that they love, right? You've connected with them and they're ready to buy, right? So you have the button there. The calls to action on your sales pages need to be clear, right? There needs to be no ambiguity on there. There is what's called on a button, a heading and then subtext, right? I recommend you use both lines, the, the call to action line and then give them the next thing, right? So if it's single occupancy and the price, make it super clear that this is what it's going to be. Or if it's a wait list, tell them that they need to get on it by this date. The call to actions need to be clear, why it doesn't work for a lot of our sales pages is because it's weak or it's not clear. Like you don't really say here just to submit or, you know, learn more, right? It doesn't inspire the call to action. Like I like long calls to action words that like that tell, yes, I want to get, I want to go on a trip of a lifetime. There is nothing wrong with having a button that has that many words on it because it inspires people to act. So you got to make sure that your calls to action to help. 
where does ChatGPT help you do that? It helps you with creating great call to action words that you can put on your buttons and also subheadings on your buttons. Don't get me wrong. I don't think your button needs to have like an entire paragraph, but it should be like, yes, exclamation point. I want in. Yes, I want, you know, I want this trip of a lifetime. Whatever that may be, ChatGPT can help you with call to action phrases that you can do that will help you um, click with your ideal client. And that's what you want to do. All right. I'm just running out of time and I'm almost done. Benefit focused copy. We focused on the bullet points associated with the itinerary, not the benefit statements. We focus on the logistics, right? It's a, you know, balcony swim up room and it's got, you know, Wi-Fi and it's got, you know, it's got a mini bar, right? That's great. But those aren't really benefits. Those are features of a room. And don't get me wrong. You need to have that in your terms, um, your trip terms and the specific terms associated with the trip. But that's not benefit statements. What benefit statements are, are what they're going to emotionally receive from this trip? Is it relaxation? Is it adventure? Is it personal growth? Is it a unique cultural experience? That's what benefit statements. And the reason why our sales pages aren't doing well is because they're focused on the features of the trip, focused on the room logistics of the trip. We're focused on um, the itinerary logistics and not the benefits. And that's where we can use ChatGPT to help us translate those um, highlights of the trips into benefit features for our ideal client. So if I'm dealing with the rich auntie who wants to go out of town and have an amazing experience with other rich aunties, right? What are some benefit statements that we could do? Once you put in the highlights, ChatGPT can help you ex um, create those emotionally connecting benefit statements. Number eight, is urgency and scarcity. Although we sell our trips ongoing long time, I am a firm and a big believer of promotion cycles and that you need to create a sense of urgency and scarcity, even though you may be selling the trip all year long or all throughout whatever the course of the time that you're selling it is, you need to create a reason to buy now right now and with a limited time. And that's what promotion cycles do. And so if you don't really understand what to include, we never discount trips. We never, like if we have a $5,000 trip, you're never gonna find my $5,000 trip for 3,500. Like we don't do that. But what we do do is we create a set of promotional bonuses and reasons to buy in our promotion cycle. So we typically run three promotion cycles at minimum upwards of six promotion cycles, dedicated promotion times for a trip that we run. And each of those promotions have something unique about the way that we've packaged up the bonuses, but the price of the trip is always the same. Does that make sense? And so ChatGPT can help you with how to create those package bundles without sacrificing the price of the trip because we don't want to sacrifice our margins. All right. And our last thing is, I actually I said 12, but I'm running out of time. Um, we've talked about this one. I'm going to um, address number 10, which is addressing objections, which is what are people that like, if you are a high ticket seller, what are some of the objections that some of your prospective clients are going to be probably payment plans, right? That's probably the one, the number one objections that people may have is money, money objections. Don't have the money. Don't have the deposit. Don't have this. I don't have that. Right. So your sales page needs to address the objections. What are those? What are some objections that, you know, cost seems to be one of the larger, but maybe safety is an objection that your client has. What's included or not? What's flexible? Is there a cancellation policy? Have you spelled all of those things out? Is that you, the reason why your sales pages aren't doing as well is potentially that you're not address, addressing those objections. It's ambiguous. It's vague as to what they may be concerned about. Let's So let's say, for example, if I'm going to the Middle East right now and I'm doing a faith-based travel and I don't address the concerns on my sales page on uh, the fact that there is a war going on um, in that part of the country, right? You're doing yourself a disservice. Doesn't mean that you can't travel there, but you should address it on your sales page, 
right? So understand what's going on in the world. Understand what your ideal client may be concerned about and address it directly. Don't be ambiguous. Don't leave it off because then it makes it makes you look like you don't either know or you're not concerned. And so sales pages need to answer all questions right there on the page. So number 10 is the uh, addressing objections. And then I'm going to go to trust signals is we're in the online space and there is a lot of fraud. You need to have badges on your pages that allow normal badges, right? So badges that deal with security. So Nor Norton security badges that you've got statements that say that you don't sell people's information, that you've got some sort of, you know, um, secure payment badge that, you know, if you've got a site that doesn't have a security certificate, it doesn't have the S on the end of the HTTP, then those are all signals that, uh, that make somebody not trust you. So having those security badges, even if you're dealing with a site like Travel Joy, I would include those badges in my sales copy right at the bottom. And then the last one is focused message is making sure that the messaging is on point and it's unique to your ideal client, right? Copy being persuasive is all about making sure that you are, you have a message that's clear. Don't be generic. Don't, don't create copy that is generic and ChatGPT can help you simplify, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we had a, we had a talk on our pages, fifth and seventh grade level, you know, seventh grade is probably a little bit too advanced and I'm not trying to, you know, demean anybody, but the language needs to be clear. It needs to be simple. It doesn't need to be complex. It doesn't have need to have a lot of words that only you understand. We don't need to impress anybody with our words. It needs to be simple, right? Simple for people to understand and take action. And so that messaging is probably the most important that connects with your client. If you don't know how to do that and you're not a writer, ChatGPT can help you with that. And I, I'm saying Chat ChatGPT because I, I use ChatGPT. There are so many other, uh, there are also additional conversational um, AI tools that you can use. You can use Claude, you can use um, the new uh, Gemini, you can use, um, I am just now playing with Perplexity, which is another tool that you can use if you're using the travel specific one, Voyager Social, you can use all of these conversational based AI tools. They are designed to help you get what you want out of them. But the first thing is, is to know how to do that. And so listen, if you are not joining me this weekend with Funnel Mastery, we're going to take all that I just went over and we're, I've actually created prompts to help you create not only your sales page content at the conclusion of this weekend, we will create the stranger offer, the opt-in offer and the funnel email series and the sales page to go with your particular sale uh, group trip or signature itinerary that you want to do. So if you would love to join us in our funnel mastery, we are still taking members. I'm only taking a very small number of people in this workshop. It is a two day workshop. We're going to be meeting Saturday and Sunday of this weekend, and we're going to get it done. So we're going to take the prompts. We're going to create the copy for all of those um, items. So our stranger offer, our email series, our sales page, we're gonna actually create the stranger offer. We're gonna actually build it out. If you're not a Travel Pro Suite member, simply go to onlinetravelboss.com forward slash TPS. And if you are already a member and you'd like to join our affiliate program, you'll be able to resell Travel Pro Suite and make 30% monthly recurring income. I look forward to working with you. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. The time is now for you to simplify how you operate your travel business. Bye for now. If you have any questions and you'd like to join us for open office hours, we're starting right now. Go to sundaygardener.com.